I'm very happy to share with you some thought about TPE and guidelines. Um, in fact, managing chronic skin disease, it's um, always an issue. And we all know the issues from the physician's point of view. Um, it's always the same thing. In fact, chronic skin disease uh, require the active uh, uh, participation of the patients or their family. But unfortunately, local treatments are complex. We've seen with Larry that a lot of tr systemic treatments are coming, but most patients are treated by local treatments nowadays. So uh, patients have oh, many beliefs and worries about treatments, so adherence is low, so treatment failures are frequent. This is the vicious circle that we face every day. So how to come out of this vicious circle? First, I think we, we have to recognize that physicians and patients, we talked about that yesterday, do not necessarily have the same goals, share the same goals. And for me, education is precisely about bridging the gap between the two points of view. Physician's point of view are that patients should adapt their life to the disease. But patients want to adapt the disease to their life. So that's quite different in terms of, of perspective. We, as physicians, have an academic knowledge because we, we have seen many patients with the same disease. So we have a theoretical knowledge, also a practical knowledge, but it's very different from the, the patient's knowledge, which is a personal knowledge, because the patient had the, had the disease from uh, his birth. We want to improve adherence to treatments, and we want to improve clinical outcomes, but the patient want, wants to improve the, 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 the quality of life is quality of life. And for the patient, adherence is not a key issue, in fact. So to my point of view, we as physicians have to change, have to change the way we look at the patients to adapt our perspective, to take the glasses of the patients and say, give me your glasses, I'm, 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 going, I'm going to see your life. But I think that the patient also has to take our glasses to see our life as, as, as physicians, to more understand the, our, our problems as physicians. So TPU is a, really a way of bridging uh, the, the, the gap from one perspective to another. You've seen yesterday these uh, four models of physician-patient relationship. I like this picture, but uh, for me, it's not a way of categorizing physician because we all in fact have those different behavior towards patients and me as a physician I can start my consultation in a patient-centered mood and I can finish when because I'm tired because I'm late in a paternalist way. So what is therapeutic education? I think it's very inter interesting and important to come back to the WHO definition because it says everything. TPU helps patients to acquire or maintain the skills they need to manage their life with a chronic disease to the, in the best way possible. Everything is in, is in this sentence, in fact. So TPU not only improves adherence, adherence is a physician concept, TP helps the patient parent to self-manage and cope with the disease, and TP should be theory-based and patient-centered. That's the definition, but I think it's always interesting to come back to this basic, basic thing. So therapeutic education is different from information. So what, what, what's TPU in, in terms of, of theory? It is a four-step process. I, will go, uh, I won't go into details because you know that. The first step is educational diagnosis. The, first, the second step is educational objectives. Which skill knowledge do the patient need according to his age, background, difficulties? The, f the third step is about acquisition of skills uh, and it's the um, in inventive uh, 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 part of uh, education with educative tools, hundreds of, of collective workshops, uh, uh, patterns, individual session, personal action plans, etc. 
And the fourth step is assessment, and it's, a key, it's key, but it's very tricky, in fact. So we proposed a, a nine questions uh, um, guideline for the initial visit, which I think it's important. We, we don't have, you don't have to use all these nine questions, but it's simply a guide that could help you to, to, um, um, to I, would, I would say, to interact with the patient in the, in the right way. Educational objective, which skill and knowledge do the patients need? In terms of knowledge, it, it could uh, cover the disease mechanisms, treatment mechanisms, but also aggravating factors. Practical skills, how to apply treatments and adapt to disease severity, on self-assessing disease severity. And relational, relational skills are also very important to explain the disease to others, to know whom, whom to turn to during a flare-up and when to ask for help. So those three levels of knowledge and skill are very important, and it's age-related. Acquisition of skills, we've, we've told about that we, uh, yesterday. Um, we can do, you can do face-to-face -face station with a um, nurse uh, during a 30 minutes or one hour uh, uh, session. Uh, it is really a patient-centered uh, process. How to treat demos could be included during this session, and TCS fears uh, have to be um, uh, explored during this session. Psychological support may be uh, integrated also, and I think um, you can use we can use more telephone calls just two or four weeks after this. Uh, first initial vis visit with a, with a nurse, I think the phone call is very powerful, just to say to the patient, okay, how do you, how things are going? Uh, and it, it, it's very, uh, in terms of empowerment of patient, it's very powerful. Collective session, basically we have two types of, of collective session, lecturers um, who are quite classical uh, 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 collective session with adventures. You, it allows to reach a large audience, but with disadvantages, because um, in, quite impersonal information uh, are covered, and acquisition of technical skills are not addressed in, in a, a very big lecture with, with 100 participants. And collect, collective session workshops are, are better suited to, to um, technical uh, demonstration or specific situation like role playing, but it's, it has also disadvantages because it takes time to, to uh, organize, um, to sort groups according to ad, age. So you can choose lectures or collective sessions, workshops, and you can uh, use demonstration during this session like uh, eczema book with uh, using metaphor, you know all that with the burning house um, for explaining inflammation on the skin and the use of corticoid trims. And we use written action plans. Written, written action plans are now included in most guidelines. It's, it's a very powerful way of planning treatment, helping patient to cope at home. Um, and most, most written act action plans are uh, decline as um, what, what, what should I do when my, my skin is clear, what should I do when, when my skin is inflamed, and how to, to move from uh, an another uh, uh, situation. I think online care education is the future. Uh, we have evidence showing that direct access online model results in equivalent improvements in AD clinical outcomes as in-person care. Uh, and, it's may, and it may be interesting in, in medically underserved areas. Now we could include uh, videos, motion-designed videos, which are very powerful to show patients how to, to treat themselves. Assessment is very, very tricky because TPE is not a medication, so you can choose to assess uh, uh, education by uh, clinical, with clinical outcomes, measures, like SCORAD-EASY, but also with quality of life, 
knowledge questionnaires, medical economic impact, patient global satisfaction, or more sophisticated outcomes that assess the self-efficacy uh, like PASEKI or coping questionnaires that assess the way the patient are, are uh, confident with their, their management. TPU is now included in uh, baseline therapy in recent, in recent AD guidelines. I'll show you the figure of the upcoming uh, European guidelines with Andreas Vollenberg as the first author. You see that educational diagnosis is now included in the basic, in the background uh, 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 management of AD. <clears throat> and when you look in, into uh, in details in the wording, you see that uh, it is said that we suggest that therapeutic education programs with proven efficacy in children and adults with a, a, atopic eczema are widely implemented. But what is proven efficacy, in fact? What is the evidence of benefit of TPU in AD? In fact, we have um, a, a Cochrane systematic review. You, you know Cochrane systematic reviews are the, the gold standard of systematic reviews. And has been, it has been done by uh, Steve Erser in, in 2014. And it is only less than 10 randomized controlled trials uh, showing that um, uh, education is effective in clinical outcomes and quality of life. But in fact, data synthesis is very difficult in this, in this clinical, in this uh, uh, systematic review because of methodological weaknesses of the, of the uh, uh, studies included, because of the wide range of outcome measures, but because of the wide range of intervention from 15 minutes nurse session to 12 hours multi-professional uh, 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 program. So it's impossible to pull together the efficacy of these studies to m make a meta-analysis. So I don't believe in these in this systematic reviews on education because it's very heterogeneous. In fact, the most the strongest level of evidence in favor of efficacy of education came from Germany with the Geddes study in children, uh, which we all know from Doris Tab, and in adults um, recently um, in the Jackie in 2017, showing that TPE, uh, the, the collective multiprofessional session, 12 hours in the evening is, effic is efficient on clinical outcomes and quality of life and the, the efficiency last one year. So it's a very strong evidence. But it's heavy. It's a little bit German, <laughs> as, as Andreas said. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have dared. <laughs> there are barriers to TPE effectiveness in AD in, in daily life. Health literacy should be aware that eczema action plans, there is a study uh, performed in the US showing that eczema action plans were found to have been written in an inappropriately high reading level, and it could be a barrier, in fact. Lack of access to trained RCPs are, 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 are an issue. Lack of adherence to education program, in fact, we face that People don't understand exactly what, are, what is education, and they don't want to come to collective session because they don't know what is it. So patients should understand better the offer, and I think uh, the, the, pay, the, the offer of education could has to be integrated at the very beginning of the process of management for the patient to understand what is it, and to be, <clears throat> it, it should be a pack of management, you know, education, and new treatments, but, but not education as an additive uh, uh, thing that you, that you could prescribe or not. And there are, there are too few patient-centered uh, education programs. A lot of, of programs improve uh, knowledge skill instead of improving coping skills. Eczema handbooks are, are useful. Uh, look at these uh, uh, parents that said that sticking to a plan or routine each day is great for both parents and children because children feel more at ease about skincare when they, they know what to expect. 
So having a plan helps parents feel more confident about helping their children. I think it's very true. But eczema handbooks don't improve AD severity, may not improve AD severity, but improve confidence in AD management skills in, only in new patients. And that's the result of a randomized control trial that have been published recently um, showing that eczema handbooks are not necessarily improving severity of, a, of AD. We should be aware that handbook style, the way, the way the handbook are written, the wording is very important. And there is a, there is a, a physician-centered wording as like AD is a frequent inflammatory chronic skin disease. It's not a patient-centered way of saying things. Dividing treatment into a flares versus maintenance state is not very helpful for patients because the definition of flare for a patient is very difficult. When you ask patient, are you in a flare or are you in a maintenance uh, 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 period of your, of your time? It, it, it's not very easy for the patient to define that. Categorizing patients into mild, moderate, severe is not very helpful for patients because are, am I severe? Am I severe? Are the patients, am I severe today? Or will I, um, um, I could be mild tomorrow. You know, it's not a, a strong category for me. It's not a constant category. Stop topical steroids when skin is better or improved. Sometimes we, we can see that in handbooks. What does that mean for the patients? When my skin is better, my skin, you, you have to define precisely what, what means better or improved with the patients. Patient-centered wording is, are topical steroids safe, for example? How to apply topical steroids in practice with motion design videos? Tips for, bath, for bathing? What should I do if my child itches at night? That's, that's a really impactful or meaningful question for patients. We have to bear in mind that targeted education on steroid phobia doesn't improve necessarily adherence and fears, but sometimes only improve knowledge on TCS. And that's the result of a, of a recent uh, randomized control trial, which included two, 275 patients um, with um, uh, targeted mainly knowledge centers uh, uh, in intervention to decrease uh, topical steroid phobia. And what this uh, study showed that um, the DLQI uh, are not really modified, but the topical score is improving with intervention. So in terms of topical steroid phobia, scratching only the surface is not enough. There is a, the, a knowledge level that you can modify with a, a handbooks on, on ed, with a quick education, but the deep-seated uh, 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 part of the iceberg is not modified by handbooks. What, what is the proportion of, uh, of patients attending TPU session in France? We, we did this uh, study um, last year showing that only 12% of the patients in a, in a large survey uh, in France, are uh, attending a co have attended co a collective session or individual session. And um, the characteristics of children attending TPU show that uh, the, 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 uh, the attendance of, was significantly associated with sex of the child. I uh, don't know why. Consult consultation with a dermatologist or pediatrician, it's quite logic. High clinical severity and presence of AD in parents. So when, when you're a parent with AD, we, you're more likely, you're more likely uh, uh, um, address your, uh, refer your, your, your children for TPE. We just finished this randomized control trial in France. It took, it took us five years. It was very hard to include patients. It was a nurse-led one-hour individual targeted education plus Standard care, standard care versus standard care alone in children and parents with AD. So it was a multicenter random, randomized control trial, including uh, 80, 87 patients in the intervention arm versus 89 patients in the control group. And the intervention done by the, the, the nurses uh, covered what is AD, covered TCS fears, 
how to decrease TCS fear, written action plans, demos, and a phone call if necessary. The main outcome was the area under the curve of the score ad from baseline to six months. And unfortunately, we find no significant, no significant difference between the two arms. So it's a negative study on the main outcome. In sensitivity analysis, we showed that the severe AD population was significantly improved by the intervention, but the whole population of, of our patient did, that, did not. <clears throat> and when we look at the secondary objective, PO score at quality of light, adherence, there were no difference. Only the topic of score assessing TCS phobia is improving when after the, the, this short targeted education. So what are the lessons? It, it's fresh, I just have the, 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 the result one week ago. So it's quite fresh, so it's just a, a free thought. Um, controlling the control group. Our control group was not very, very, very standard in fact, because it, it was an hospital setting uh, study. So nowadays education is really integrated in our practices and uh, it makes a difference when, when um, we ask uh, our colleagues, do the standard. They are not doing the standard. <laughs> they are doing education. So we, we fail to control this control group. Uh, so we're facing t today uh, um, the difficult paradox of believing, strongly believing that's why we are here. To, to, that an intervention is very helpful on failing to prove its benefit. So do we, do we really assess the right outcomes? Because we, we decided to, to assess the severity outcomes. Maybe we have to, to assess something more uh, sophisticated like coping questionnaires on some, or I don't know. But maybe TPU improves the... the, the I, HCP's quality of light in the first place because, instead of patient's quality of light. It's my feeling that, that education changed my, my way of, of interacting with patients. And I won't go back now. It changed completely my, my life, my way of, of, of doing the, the consultation. But I'm not sure it's, it's um, easily uh, uh, accessible. And we, we didn't assess our quality of life. And do we have to assess everything? It's a question. I mean, maybe, maybe it's a philosophical question. But <laughs> um, am I going to change my practice in the light of, of these results? I don't know, in fact. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to... to, to I, I think I'm not giving up. I'm not saying to my nurses, stop because it's not efficient, because I believe it's efficient. You know, it's very paradoxical. So what other take-home message? Uh, TPA is now part of basic management in all AD guidelines. Uh, it's really a, an improve because 15 years ago, or even 10 years ago, it was not the same uh, case. TPA contents is highly viable. We, we've seen a lot of examples yesterday across centers and countries, and that's good. Uh, and there is no ideal TPA's content, but what is sure is that TPA must be done by trained, multi-professional teams and it has to be patient-centered and tailored to local healthcare systems. Assessing TPU benefits is challenging and resource-consuming, um, and maybe classical RCTs may not be the right way. Thank you very much for your attention.